Hello and welcome to News Click. We're just days away from the very crucial Delhi election 2020. And uh, healthcare being a very important issue that has surfaced over the last five years in the electoral campaigns of the BJP, the Ahmadmi Party, and the Congress Party as well, and the significance that it assumes for the citizens of the city. And to discuss this issue, we have with us Ritu Priya from the Center of uh, Medicine and Community Health at uh, JNU and uh, Rince Joseph, who is the president of the United Nurses Association in Delhi. We'll be discussing greater issues of healthcare that are plaguing the city and what is, more importantly, the way forward. So the first question to you, uh, ma'am, is that in the last five years, what have we seen in terms of the health expenditure? Because I think the most crucial thing is how much is our government spending on our health? Uh, well, I think Delhi has been relatively privileged in terms of the budget expenditure allocation being about 13%, which is much higher than most states. Yeah. And yet it's obviously not enough. The citizens of Delhi have a problem of accessing health care, which is affordable, which is trustworthy when they need it. And therefore, there is a need for much greater allocation to health. Uh, what the JSA with the, has been advocating for, and that's the calculations that we uh, all seem to come up with, is something like 5 to 6 percent of the GDP of the state is what is actually required. But since we are at the moment at about 0.65 percent, yes. it's going to take us time to get there. But there should be the move in that direction with coming up to something like 2% in the next five years, and then another five years, we should reach the 3% yeah. and then 5%. So this is on. the way forward. At the same time, I think uh, another very crucial question is about the conditions of the workers. We've seen a very uh, big strike that the nurses had in the last uh, one month and a sustained movement that they've been conducting. So when the government is investing, of course, in, in, th in terms of money, what is the condition of the workers? What are their demands? And uh, about uh, the, the protests as well that we've been seeing coming from the nurses and healthcare workers. Right. See, when we talk about health, you know, it's always a healthy nation. We need a healthy citizen. That's very important. So uh, the patients, the nurses are the advocates of the patients. So we need good advocates for the patient care. So the scenario, the, the nurses are migrating to the foreign countries because of the low wages. That's why the Supreme Court recommendation, we United Nurse Association, you know, we are demanding to implement the Supreme Court recommendation. As per the bed status, the nurses' wages has to be implemented. For that, we have been fighting for since long time. On 20th of uh, you know, uh, October, we conducted a big mass protection at Jandamanda, and we announced that uh, you know, we, if the government is not going to implement, we will be starting our uh, Satyagraha and all. Yes. Since the direction was given by the Delhi High Court to implement the nurses' minimum wages as per the SC recommendation, the government has been not taken any steps to implement, to make it in the legislation. So we have been, uh, you know, continuously meeting all the officials and the government, uh, you know, ministers and chief minister. And all. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it done. And uh, there was a massive uh, mobilization of the people. Around 5,000 people are on the street. Uh, we marched to the United Nurses Association. We marched on the working day to the Delhi Secretariat on 10th of December. That's very, uh, you know, particular day. That yes. is the National Human Rights Day. So after all these things, uh, I'm really upset that we approach all the political parties and everybody was assured that we will do it, but no one is included or demand in the election manifesto. That is really unfortunate. But still we have hope that who is going to come for the, you know, the newly elected government will surely con you know, consider this to implement it. And definitely UNA will, uh, you know, hold for the accountability because uh, they are sure that all the political parties, all the mainstream political parties, they are sure to United Nurses Association and uh, the nursing community uh, that they are going to implement this. Talking about the numbers, the nurses, near about 90,000 nurses are registered in as per the Delhi Nursing Council. And uh, most of the nurses are the main earning members in the family. 
and uh, it's near about you know 2.5 to 3 lakh people yes. have the voting power and uh, you know the nurses have the you know the part of the uh, you know system the democratic system obviously we will be hoping that you know who's going to come for the next uh, newly new government uh, they will have to consider this and this will help the uh, help to improve the betterment of the healthcare system if you have a qualified nurses in the country and relating to this, you know, the Jan Swasthya Abhiyan has also come up with a manifesto of their own, the points that they want the Delhi government and whoever forms the government next to consider. And one of the crucial things drawing from the experiences on the ground happens to be the Delhi Health Act. So if you could tell us more about what that act actually entails and why it's so crucial for uh, the state of Delhi to have a health care act. Yeah. Maybe one can start with the fact that the Janswasta Bhyan has been advocating for a long time yes. for a right to health and health care across the country, which is just as relevant for Delhi as a state. Uh, within that, there are a whole set of issues that need to be considered. The first of it would be strengthening the public system. Yes. And in that, human resources is certainly one of the major issues. Uh, I think taking off from what he's saying, there is a difference between the way the private sector deals with the human resources and the way the public sector does. And there are some differences in the issues there. But clearly, in the public system, if you want to strengthen it, filling in all the vacancies that exist, which still do in Delhi, even in something like Delhi, it's not rural areas only where yes. there are those vacancies. Uh, the recruitment and posting mechanisms are something which certainly need rationalization and making more transparent so that people are enthused to come. The uh, contractualization of workers was a, a great demotivating force and people would be looking for something else. As he says, it's the wages and the contractual nature. These two together which demotivate people from coming. The government, this present government has to some extent regularized some contractual workers, but there's still much more to be done in that direction and vacancies remain. So that's a major area. But beyond, I think we need to acknowledge the fact that this government also did attempt to increase the access to services. For example, the Mohalla clinics. Yes. That's something that's a model that's being looked at across the world by public health people to see what it actually will mean. We're not yet sure how far it will go because it has weaknesses. And we can you know, discuss those maybe at some yeah. point. Yeah. Um, but then there are other issues of, therefore, since we've got a large private sector, um, regulation of the private sector becomes a second major area. You know, so pu public sector strengthening, private sector regulation, and then when we're talking of right to health and health care, not just health care, the other dimensions that affect people's health. And in this city, we know pol air pollution is clearly one, access to water, sanitation, sewage services, all of those are issues which are very much part of the right to health and health care. And uh, the fourth, I'm just sort of trying to cluster the yes. whole set of issues that are there in the manifesto that the JSA has prepared. Sure. And um, the fourth one would look at is really the issues of specifically socially vulnerable groups yes. and social violence. And to discuss that like somewhat in more detail, uh, the first thing being that there are gaps in the functioning of the healthcare system that we currently have, as you rightly pointed out. So when we look at the public sector, as we've discussed the private one, but when we look at the public sector in terms of Mohalla clinics, what all can be done to further strengthen this model, which is being applauded, of course? One is the fact that it's still got very limited coverage. Yeah. And therefore, you can't really see impact at a population level in the city yet. Because um, even the, pr the uh, program, as the government has stated it, is to create 1,000 mohalla clinics by 2020. They've been able to do 450. Yeah. Because land is an issue, you know, construction, all of those issues. And then again, manpower becomes a barrier. Um, but what we actually need is not just something like 450 or 1,000. Even to cover about one third of the population of Delhi, yeah. if we take the most vulnerable as the needy, then they need at least 4,000. And therefore, it has to be more aspirational than that. Yeah. That's why the budget is required to increase well beyond what it, there is. Yeah, definitely. You know, we're talking about the Mohalla Clinic. And at the same time, we have the public sector. You know, we need to strengthen the quality of the public, uh, so, uh, you know, hospital facilities. Why the people are going to the private 
because they have been feeling, feeling that if I go to the five star hospital, you know, JC Accredited Hospital, I will be treated well. So the government also should think that the strengthening of the facilities and the betterment of the healthcare system in the public sector. And when we look at the manifestos, like you earlier mentioned, that no party is discussing actually the issues of both the workers in the healthcare sector and healthcare sector generally as well for the elections. The BJP has been constantly advocating for the PMJ scheme. So if you can tell our viewers more about what this scheme is and why JSA is also uh, not really uh, supporting this and what, what loopholes does it actually have? I think this government, present government, needs to be congratulated for at the moment rejecting to bring PMJY on. And that's something it's getting flagged for from the other parties. Um, the basic argument against the PMJ, which is premised on the fact that the government will pay premium for insurance for the 40% below poverty line. And they would be uh, then take uh, a maximum of 5 lakhs per year per household and go to either a public or a private of their choice, which is empaneled by the program and therefore can get treatment from whichever uh, their institution of choice through the insurance system where they don't have to pay and the government will put that five lakh in. The, there are several issues which are problems with that. We've already seen with the previous social insurance schemes like the RSBY, uh, the uh, Swasth Bhima Yojana, that it tends to distort the practice of health itself. Mm -hmm. Because all these are hospitalization. You will get the money only if there is hospitalization. So a whole lot of things which could be done as outdoor procedures start becoming indoor. Whether it is public sector, so it distorts the whole nature of healthcare and unnecessary things start being done, which don't need to be done. Two, it is public money, yeah. taxpayers' money going to private institutions. So instead of that money going to strengthen the public system and for example have more mohalla clinics or improve the quality of the public hospitals, it goes into the private coffers and adds there. So those are really the major problems. It also leaves out, since it's the bottom 40%, yeah. and you know, let's say the top 5% can cater to themselves, but it leaves a big chunk yeah. of 55% with really no access to quality care. So on that note, these were systemic changes that are being actively suggested to whoever forms the government next, but also issues that need to be on the agenda of both the government and the citizens. Thank you so much, both of you, for joining us and flagging these very important issues. Uh, we'll end on that note. Thank you.